Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. Admit, 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 admit. Okay. All right. Uh, Audrey, I can see you today. <laughs> you had a question yesterday. Do you want me to answer it for you right now? Okay. Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, okay. great. Sorry, I had a problem with my Zoom. Uh, my question was, um, I know that in one of the pitches uh, that you showed, uh, there was someone that had like a uh, excerpts of like some yeah. things. uh is it uh it, sorry are we gonna pitch like live or can we yes. like see the video yes or... we are gonna pitch live so let me just explain to you what that's gonna look like you're gonna all be moved to the room that you're assigned to and then there'll be a moderator in that room and the moderator will introduce themselves and say okay we're gonna go by alphabetical order by first name so audrey you'll probably be one of the first to go so they'll tell you um, when you're up, you know, when you're up on deck. Uh, and um, Sarah, are you here? Can you talk or no? I can now. I was finishing a phone call. <laughs> yes. Okay. So because I'm never in the room. So can you tell her what happens in the room? Yes. Okay. So in the room, you guys are, Valerie, are you going to handle letting people in? Yeah, I am. Okay. In the room, you guys are most likely not going to know who your industry is right away because we don't want to like freak you out. Um, so you, you're going to go in alphabetical order, Audrey, you're an A, you'd probably go close to the top. I can't guarantee you'd be first because it's AU and there might be an AD or an AN <laughs> that would be ahead of you. But it's, there's a moderator in the room. If you're in the LA room, you will most likely be with me. Um, and we may or may not say who's there um probably not you will get that information on monday afterwards but we'll say you guys each have one minute to do your pitch and as the moderator i'll say okay the first person up is anna c and the person on deck is audrey t um and we encourage you guys to watch each other's pitches however if you are doing crazy things in, and in your space when you are not pitching you need to have your camera off because we did have industry guests complain about some actor oh. doing some crazy thing that I could not see because I can only see the people that are talking um, while the pitches were going on. So you can have your camera on if you're going to be supportive and just like be there while people are pitching or turn your camera off. Everyone needs to be muted unless you are pitching. And we'll say, you know, Audrey, you're on deck. So you know you're next. And then we'll say, it's Audrey T's turn on deck is Barbara. And so you'll know when it's your time to go and you'll have the one minute. Unfortunately, we do use a timer and we time to make sure it is only 60 seconds. You can go a couple seconds over before your moderator will cut you off. Um, but be prepared 60 seconds because there's about 40 to 50 actors, if not more in your room. So everyone has to have a chance to go um and so you're welcome to stay the whole time everyone's pitching so you can be supportive of your fellow actors and then when everyone's pitched your moderator is most likely going to say did we miss anyone did anyone come in late and give them a chance to pitch and then when everyone's gone the actors are going to leave and go back to the main room where valerie <laughs> and shot are and uh, you can do your thing with Val and Scott. And then the moderator is going to stay with the industry guests. And the industry guests are going to let us know who their favorite pitches were. And again, it's not the person they're most likely going to call in. It could be the one that made them laugh the most. It could be the one that resonated with them because it reminded them of their mom. Like it can be whatever they want it to be. We're not telling them it has to be the best actor or the best looking actor or whatever it is. It's whatever resonates with them. And then they all have to agree. Um, and that's how we decide on the winner of the room. 
it's very fun. It's normally a very supportive environment. I know my room, I'm always very supportive of you guys. I, I'm sure Jesse and Alec are also that way because I know them as people. So it's a fun thing to experience. And it's great to see what other actors are seeing and saying because it gives you guys ideas of what to do in the future. Did that cover it, Val? Yeah, that was yeah. really helpful. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay I don't want to say on this because I do it every year. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very helpful. That was really, really good. Um, okay, so um, uh, good. Thank you, Audrey, for asking that question. I just want to, Violet, are you able, Violet, are you able to come up here uh, real quick? Or I see you have your camera off and normally you don't. Yeah, I can. I'm here. Sorry. I was okay. Can you do here. your pitch for me? I changed it. Do you want the one before? No, I want your new one. Okay. Um, so here we go. Hi, my name is Violet Harris, and I'm usually cast as the resourceful, smart ass tomboy. Uh, you know, the one that's kind of annoying, but you need to keep around, otherwise, you might die. I am a cross between a dark Hermione Granger and a uh, racially ambiguous Jennifer Lawrence from Don't Look Up. I can speak in an RP accent. Um, I know how the basics of hula dancing, and I can also sing 1940s jazz tunes as well as folk music. I would love to work with you. Talk to you soon. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so here, in the beginning, um, I'm usually cast as no. Cut that, say, I, I play. Okay. Right, I play that. So cut okay. that out. Uh, I noticed you use the word casted. Uh, that's there's no such word, right? So don't use that word. Remember that. Um, and so I, but I, I like, I just like I tend to play or I play like because I think you don't need all those words. Okay. Um, and when you're doing it, then really own it. We were just on our mastermind this morning with our clients, and we were working there pitches. And, you know, one of the things that just kept coming up over and over again was, um, you know, really allow yourself to be in the thing. And we also talked to our clients this morning about finding the, the movement. Like if it's like a scene, right? When we have a scene and we do text analysis, we know like, oh, this part is faster. This part is slower. This is more, you know, right. So, and make sure that you, you give yourself time to land a beat, right? Right. So land the character, land the beat, right? Um, because, you know, often we book roles because of, you know, the thing that we put at the end, right? The little extra thing or the, the, the dot on the end. And so just make sure that you really land those beats. But yeah, that's much better than your other one. Like it's, it's more... It's it's clearer, you know, it's to the point. Like I get how to cast you. Okay. Good. I'm not gonna be able to repeat this. Maybe Regina Perone, can you repeat exactly what Jesse said earlier about I was thinking of this for Hadas because this conversation we had yesterday about being specific, and that's how you get that's how you get response back. Or Regina Ohashi, like. I'm so you're asking the wrong person in me. Okay, then Regina Ohashi, I'm asking Regina Ohashi. Can you I remember exactly how she worded yes, it? Yes, I know what you're talking about, but I can't, I can't remember the exact. Oh, genius. <laughs> what, what she said, I was like, yeah, that. Every, everything Jesse says is genius. I, I yeah, get the words yeah. out of her mouth and I'm just, uh. Yeah, she's really good. She's really good with all that stuff. I mean, she's just great with words. And so, um. But the way that she said it, I was so thinking of you today, Adas. I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what I was trying to explain yesterday and not, not as elegant as and eloquent as Jesse. But it's it's like the more clear you are, the more um, and I think it was who was it that did? Oh, it was um it was um who's oh my god, I can't remember anything today. Can you guys tell? I'm like, what is my name? I don't even know. Whose who's a pitch was it? It was, um, was it Effie? No, it was before then when she was talking about, um, uh, I don't remember. I'm never going to remember. So forget it. Forget it. 
Okay. All right. All right. So who? So that's great. That's really good. Who else would like to do their pitch? Would anyone like to put their pitch out there? Darren Husk, your pitch was really good. I thought it was really good. Um, and a, some of you guys I gave notes on, right? Some of you guys I gave notes on. So, uh, Jenna. I recorded my pitch yet, though. Is that okay? okay. What? Who said that? Uh, I, say, I haven't recorded my pitch yet, though. Is that okay? I was going to record it today because it's changed a little from the one that I had. Yeah. You guys, you guys can record it. And yeah, I like the way that it's going. I'm absolutely. Uh, hey, Jenna, I know Jenna, come on for your iPhone for a second. Hi, how are you? Uh, Hi, you're can you do your pitch again? Yeah, so I sent you a new version. But oh, you did? Okay, we'll do it anyway. It. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Jenna Goodwin. Some of the films I've starred in are Doghouse, alongside Stephen Graham, Eye Against Eye, directed by James Marquand, son of the director of Return of, Jedi, uh, Return of the Jedi, um, Perfect Ten, the award-winning Perfect Ten, as well as the award-winning Ricky Beadle Blair MBE. Uh, recent auditions I've had are for TV series The Power, Netflix series The Witcher and Chaos. I'm trained in Wing Chun Kung Fu. I'm the direct daring detective, disarming detective even, that will make you feel like shit, even though she hasn't got her own shit together. And I'm a spicy Sandra Bullock crossed with a British Tatiana Mazzolani and would love to work with you. All the best. Sorry, I messed that right up, but yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, <laughs> you did take my notes well. You did my well. I, I, the part where you go award-winning, like, nah, it, it, I don't think you need it there. I um, I like the Star Wars thing and the other thing, the first thing, those two are great. I think that you don't need all of that necessarily. So you could probably get on to your brand. I'm kind of stuck on this detective thing because I also think that, um, uh, I, I feel like, I don't know why I'm stuck on that, but I just, I, I, I feel like there's, you should give me a gender instead of a profession there. So the other ones I had were Secret Agent, You Had Me Down as a Super Villain, I had Boss Bitch, um, what else do we have? Yeah, I, I kind of like this, um, you know, you feel very sort of like you could do like Claire Foy's role and the dragon tattoo, like you feel like you have a post-apocalyptic little bit of like, she could, you know, Resident uh, Evil. Yeah, like hardcore. You definitely have that hardcore thing. I mean, mm. I think you could almost say chick. Yeah. Right? Or, I'd love to be Ripley yeah. Aliens, for example. Like, I'd love to be that, actually. Yeah. Oh, I totally see that. Yeah. You know, I think you could say chick. Um, I mean, you definitely have a chick flavor to you. Like, I feel like it's like a little bit of that. Like, uh, you know, you're definitely a girl, but you also have a very... Um, you you have an androgynous thing about you like a very yeah yeah you do you have that very uh you know like and, like i know you could kick my ass kind of thing yeah you have that going yeah. on yeah so chick um so my taglines were we'll get the job done in a hot mess uh, or we'll make you feel like shit but can't get our own shit together. So I've got like this chaotic scattiness to me as well. And it's just like, Jesus, what is she doing? And then I pull it out of the bag at the last minute. Um, but because I have got that comedic side to me as well, but I've also got the You know when thing. they remade uh, Prime Suspect? They remade Prime Suspect in America with Maria Bello. Um, and that's, she was a detective, of course, but I, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the male version is the detectives whose phone rings and he gets out of bed and he's hung over and he throws his dirty clothes on and he yeah. gets out the door. Like you're the female version. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is actually me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so, um, you know, you could be a, like, you could be a, um, um, you know, an action figure, like you could be a chick that like an assassin, right? Well, you, what I was going with, yeah, the secret agent assassin thing. Yeah. With that whole thing. Cause yeah. But I, I don't know if you that. need to necessarily, if you're going to say things like that, I feel like, you know, like, um, 
you know, the assassin chick that was forced into being an assassin. There's a movie that was on Netflix about the girl that was forced into being an assassin. It was called, I forget what it was called, but she was forced into it. And she, well, I love Tarantino, like Kill Bill Uma Thurman. Like that really inspired me to get into martial arts. And she's, yeah. she's in that, isn't she? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's good. Yeah. It's good. I, it's good. It's it's much better than okay. it was. Thank you for taking my notes. But I'm stuck on that detective. I think you shouldn't say yeah. If you're going to say detective, detective, secret agent, you know, just plain MI6. Badass I, shit. I'll just, is it like, because I wanted to do Bond films, but it's more, because that would be the, the female version of James Bond, wouldn't it? The MI6. Yeah. Secret agent. But, but also you could be the bad chick too. The, ba the baddie, the baddie Bond girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, which okay. one now? Overwhelm myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look, you guys. Um, don't worry so much about that in the room. Like you want to make it clear on how to use you. And you can't say, you know, you, you, you like I said yesterday, and we'll continue to sell. You cannot sell everything. No way. No one buys everything. So for this room on Sunday, from what you know, which one should I go with out of all those archetypes? Or does it matter? I, I don't think it matters. I, I've known Jenna for quite a few years, Valerie. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. Teresa Cole. Hi, uh, I've known Jenna and I've been in the film with her. I think I've been the villain, villainous uh, secret agent chick. Okay. Androgynous chick, yeah. Don't know, don't do the... Well, I think you could do detective, but I think you're more, in, more Those interesting. Those are like examples. Like, you know, like I play the detective, the secret agent, you know, right, you know, uh, aliens, like a soldier, like... I see myself playing a lot. You could say those as a bunch of examples. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'd love to be like that actress you were in Resident Evil with. Um, Mila Jovovich. There you go. Uh, that would be my dream to be someone yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, That's you're cool. totally a Mila Jovovich. You could totally do that. Absolutely. And it's almost yeah. like you have that, uh, the, new, the new kind of chick more. Like Shirley's there and in um what was the action monster <laughs> no not monster well yeah like, sure but yep. the one uh where they are old guard what old guard the old guard yeah who said that bernadette oh yeah bernadette i love that movie the old guard that was such a good oh, I don't movie. Know. oh yeah well, I love, we, love did that scene. we did the scene oh, you mean lace to the scene that was from the old guard Oh, okay awesome ah that's a great little movie i've seen that a couple of times i love action movies i'm weird like that okay who else wants to do thank one? you uh -huh. violetta you want to do it yes okay. um so while we were doing the mastermind i came up with a new branding statement okay let me hear it um hi i'm violetta maker i would love to work with you on your projects i play the seemingly harmless outsider who always has her nose in a book, but is actually researching how to build monsters in her basement. Or maybe she is the monster. A cross between back in the day, Winona Rye and old school Christina Ricci. Russian is my second language. I paint in watercolor and acrylic. I've auditioned for Anne Frank, NCSI, Freeform, Nickelodeon, Zula the Cave Women, and most recently for a SAG film described as Dirty Dancing meets Carrie and have an audition for Poison Ivy. I'd be perfect for Wednesday, Stranger Things, American Horror Story, and interview with a vampire. Fun fact, when I was little, little after watching Gremlins, I tried to turn my Furby into one, and my parents learned English by watching Chucky. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you. You have to make that my parents uh, learned English by watching Chucky more into the connection to horror. Mm-hmm. Right. I wouldn't use that necessarily in this pitch because that's really right for the horror pitch that we were talking mm -hmm. about, which I think is totally right for you. And I completely think that you should be doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. I loved it. I would just, I wouldn't do that last one without you can make it. I like the fun fact. I like the fun fact thing. So I should but, get rid of the English learning English part. Yeah. I don't think you need that for this. Okay. Just use okay. it for the horror one. Okay. So when you when you do the ones that you're going to do to the horror community, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to do one that's just focused on 
horror directors, writers, and casting directors, right? And it's going to be like, I love horror. Why? Well, maybe it's because my parents learned how to speak English, right? And so uh, by watching Chucky, Mm -hmm. right? And make sure that lands like we talked about today, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that works really well as a pitch video for those people. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Yeah, Jay, you want to do yours? You're all dressed. Yeah. Up. Look how cute you look. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate uh-huh. that. Um. Yeah. So my new uh, challenge of adjectives has caused me to play with something a little bit on the darker side. I'm not sure if it works. Okay. Let's hear it. Mm. Hey, I'm Jay Samuels, that hilariously inappropriate best friend with a slightly sadistic side. <laughs> you know that friend that's the life of the party. And can also help you how to body if needed. <laughs> I'm trained in Krav Maga and Shinru and in Jitsu Karate, first degree black belt. I also speak Greek and Spanish and a little bit of French. And I'm a trained professional dancer as well as a beginning novice aerialist. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to seeing what I can bring to your future projects. Perfect. I love it. Now, I just want you to make sure that you really even go farther with the commit to, right? Like, there's a reason that someone believes when they're cutting you to shreds that, like, really believe that when you do that, yeah. right? When you yeah. flip it. I mean, it was close. It was better. But yeah, keep going. So go um, further. It was good. I like this because I do think this is, this is really right for you in so many ways. Right. Um, um, it's kind of like the evolution of all of our brands. Like it's so exciting when I get to watch over a period of time, a, a client's brand like Violetta just now and you like your brand really evolves and it, it's almost like it just gets that sharper and sharper point. So remember, you guys, I wrote my first branding statement in 1995. In 2018, a client said to me, you're the adorable bully. And I was like, thank you. I mean, like, I just got that in 2018. So it's like, I went from Boy of Ballsy Broad, who will take you through the fun house. And then next was cross between Kathy Bates and Drew Barrymore that an agent gave me. And then next was like the log line idea. And the next was adorable bully, but it all begins to like, just become a more sharper version of who you play. Um, Mm -hmm. And the more that you can combine it like yin and yang, like Jay, that was a great example of a yin and a yang. Did everyone see that? Like I'm this and I'm this, right? I don't know. So then it made, he made them work together. So then I got the whole guy. Like, I'm like, oh, I know what to do with this guy. And immediately I see you in a commercial. I see you in a movie. I see you in a TV show. And I know what part you'll play. And that's what, right. So part of like, here's the thing. Here's the, here's the thing, you guys. We are all, so many actors I meet are standing outside their business with this whole premise of like, gosh, I hope they like us. I don't want to piss anyone off. Uh, Would it be like, you're standing outside there and you're also making decisions based on this person said this, this person said this, this person, this. So I want you to come back inside your business, right? It's your business, not mine, not any of our coaches at Actors Fast Track, not your agents, no one's business except yours. And so the more that you allow yourself to be in your business, then you can record yourself doing a pitch and say, oh yeah, I could go a little farther there with the acting. And that doesn't make sense, right? Like you begin to make decisions that are healthy business decisions, not decisions because, oh, you're not supposed to do that, which is like the world that we are trained to to be in, right? Mm -hmm. And so- that is just uh, really good. Like really, really, like what happens is the reason that people get more clarity is because they stand in their value more and more. Like, look at you, Jay, you've stood in your value more and more the more I've known you. Like the guy I met is not this guy. 
No, I don't even know who this guy is. Like, <laughs> it's good. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Anna Maria. Anna Maria, come to the window. We want to marry you. Aww. Yeah, that's, that's what my, my best friend when I was in high school was named Anne Marie. And when we were in Germany, speaking of Germany, it's a small world. When we were in Germany and we were 17 and we were drunk on Heineken beer or something, because it was whatever, we were these two guys we met and they came to our window. We we're staying in a private house and they came mm-hmm. to and they go, Valerie, Anne Marie, come to the window. We want to marry you. And we're like, shh, shh. So, you know. We were young and stupid. Anyway, so that's what that story is. <laughs> so um, I've been pretty busy. So I've been thinking about doing a new pitch because I feel like my old pitch is kind of getting old. Okay, so here's that the note. thing. For all of you, this is really important, what I'm just going to say. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you set your intention for what you want to accomplish at the Game Changer personally. Okay. Right. One of the things that I would set for myself if I were you is like get more clarity on my brand. So you're really doing that when you're going into the private breakout rooms and we're breaking off in individual groups that you're like, oh, I'm going to work this new angle. Right. OK, good. Let's hear the new one, even if it's written. Yep. Hi, I'm Anna Maria Rodiger. I tend to play the weirdo with a pinch of psycho who will smile while stabbing you in the back. And two seconds later cover your wounds. I'm originally from Frankfurt, Germany, but also have citizenship in America. I would love to work with you. So let's grab some coffee and make some plans. Okay, great. Um, That's good. Uh, Do the front part again. Uh, I tend to play the the weirdo with a pinch of psycho who will smile while stabbing you in the back. Then two seconds later, cover your wounds. I don't think you need that. The could the wound part? Yeah, I don't I don't get that. It's not it's not reading how you want it to read. I don't, I don't think. Okay. Uh, do the front part again. All right. So hi, I'm Anna Maria Bubba. I tend to play the weirdo with a pinch of psycho who will smile. Okay. When you say I play the weirdo, you need to take a pause there. Okay. Let it land. I play the what? I play the weirdo. Okay. And remember, you guys, you can do this. You can do this. You can move around, right? Okay, do it again. Okay. Hi, I'm Anna Maria Rodiger. I tend to play the weirdo. Okay, land it, land it. Go down with your voice and land it. Go down. Okay. Hold on, let me write that right down. Okay. I'm making notes, sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Hi, I'm Anna Maria Rodiger. And I tend to play the weirdo. Good, one, two, three. Go. Stab you in the back. Or, no, sorry. what with a bit of psycho. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So okay. do one, two, three, and then say the line. Okay. So hi, I'm Anna Maria Rodiger. I tend to play the weirdo with a pinch of psycho. <laughs> Who will smile while stabbing you in the back? Okay, can you do the pinch of psycho? Even <laughs> more like uh, like a little like just like not Anna Maria or not the Anna Maria we know, like maybe super girly, right? Like, oh, and I also have this, right? Like, give me a little girly there that, because you're doing now, you're like landing that psycho thing. So do that. All right. Hi, I'm Anna Maria Rodiger. I tend to play the weirdo. Good. With the pinch of psycho. With a <laughs> smile while stabbing you in the back. Okay, wait, with a pinch of psycho, and then what? Psycho. Um, who will smile while stabbing you in the back. Okay, so then, with the pinch of, like, throw that away like you did. Okay. Wait, wait, and then play something different there. So it's like three different notes that all equal one thing. Okay. Okay? So, hi, I'm Anna Maria Rodiger. I tend to play the weirdo. With the pinch of psycho. Who will smile while stabbing you in the back? That's lovely. Keep going. I'm originally from Germany. Okay, and I don't like all that. Okay, so what do I do after that? No, no, you did the whole ending thing, and and where are you? That's fine. So do I just leave at the at the back and then do like I would love to work with you? Yes. Grab coffee. Okay. 
I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. I will I will work on that. I, I'll put notes. Okay. So girly after psycho or girly psycho. Count three in the head and then back up. And then you guys, you guys, yeah, just do the text analysis like you would on a script. Right. So like where like um, I think yeah. like what I'm asking her to do is give me a little performance with each thing, which which yeah. gives it like right, but which then really shows me that she's the weirdo with the psycho and you know, it shows me everything that you are. Okay. Yeah, All right. You. Um, Amy. Hi. Hi. Um, I thought I would try and do mine now and then work on no. it before I talk to you. Okay. Go ahead. Um, okay, I'm going to read it. Um, <clears throat> Hi, I'm Amy Schumacher, a classically trained action actor based in LA. When I'm not playing a Jedi or a cop with a really big heart and a very particular set of tactical skills, I play everyday heroes, scientists trying to save the world, or a mom with an arsenal in her basement. I recently played a two-faced mayor in an upcoming Christmas horror movie. That film is set for release in mid-December and stars David Howard Thornton of the Terrifier series. Distributors are already calling it the holiday horror movie of the year. It's especially exciting because I also produced it. I'm an award-winning producer and actor. I recently won an award for my portrayal of a daughter dealing with an ailing father in the heartfelt drama Memory Lane. And my Star Wars fan film has been highly successful, bringing in multiple awards for my performance as a lightsaber-wielding Jedi. My extensive stunt training lends itself to that last one. I'm proficient in swords, hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons, and uh, falls. You can see me in action in my streaming series Nightwatch, where I play a grieving cop who is unexpectedly charged with protecting a mischievous little alien boy. Again, I'm Amy Schumacher, and I'd love to work with you on your next project. Okay, so uh, we need to cut it. Okay. So I, I also think that um, let's see what happens if we put our special skills cl closer to the front. Because, okay. you know, um, and I would not sell the, pro I would sell the producer thing at the end, but I would just, uh, you know, because there might be a young filmmaker in the room or something and it's like, oh man, you know, maybe there's something there, like a Chapman person or something. So I do think you should have that as, okay. you know, but I don't think it should have such a spotlight in this pitch. Yeah. Okay. I wondered. And I that. forgot who you are. And I, I think that you could cut some of those lines out. Like, I don't think you need all of that line. Okay. Like, I think that, yeah. I think you just need to take a pair of scissors to it. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, you just need to cut it like a writer. Yeah. Um, don't add anything. You don't need to add anything. You just need to cut it. Okay. I would say like, and rearrange it a little bit. Like, I feel like, let's see what happens if, and we have time to work on this in a little bit. So we'll do yeah. that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Good. Thanks. All right. I'll see you soon. Yes. Rosemary. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you're back. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. Just putting this all together again, like everybody else. Doing okay. Work. All right. So, um. Hi, I'm Rosemary Thomas. I <clears throat> tend to play sassy soul with a dry sense of humor. I, but I just got cast in, let me start all over. I didn't just get cast. Um, hi, I'm Rosemary Thomas. I tend to play a sassy soul, but I was in Jeffrey Dahmer's story, episode eight. And I also got to work with, <clears throat> with on better things. I tend to, be a cross between Jennifer Lewis and, Ange and Angela Bassett, who can pull you up or put you down. My mind at heart speak as one, so crossing me would be a mistake. Thank you very much. I look forward to doing business with you. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Rosemary Thomas. My recent credits are Better Things and Jeffrey Dahmer. Everyone's talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. You don't need to tell me. Just say my recent credits are. Okay. Right? Um, you know, I'm that sassy. What, what did you say? Sassy, what? Sassy soul. Okay. And then tie it to the brand later on. What are you saying about brand later on? 
that um, I can pull you up or put you down. And then I say, my mind and heart speak as one. So crossing me would be a mistake. Okay, I might get rid of that. Bring mm -hmm. that second line that you just said up to the first one. Say all the brand together. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so start with my credits and my recent credits are Better Things than Jeffrey Donner. Mm -hmm. I play or... Uh -huh. Um, I, um, uh, cast at sometimes as a sassy, no, sometimes, no. I'm, I'm cast, cast as a sassy soul. Yeah. I'm cast as a sassy soul. Own it. I am cast as a sassy soul who can bring you up or put you down. Yeah. Go Most on. Me would be a mistake. That, <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. That's what you need. Right. And then you can end up whatever. You just gave it to me right then and there. Do I? Right? Uh huh. Uh, you know what? I just want to point you out. And this is like so typical of actors. And uh, and whoever was up uh, before Anna Maria did it, too. Um, you guys stop saying sorry and stop apologizing for yourself or stop saying, I did this a little bit, or I kind of sort of did this. Mm -hmm. It's very common, right? Because we are like the abused wife in the corner. So we don't, it's hard for us to stand in the value and say, I am an actor. Because someone, when we were waiting tables said, what have you been in, right? And so we took that to me like, well, I've been in acting school. I have a bachelor's degree in that. And I've been in a lot of off-Broadway shows, but we're in LA, so you probably don't know what that is, right? Like you learn, sometimes you have to give yourself a, you know, Alexandra Billings, who's the famous, you know, actress now, she's so famous. She taught me how to stand in my value in a lot of ways, like how to say what I mean, mean what I say. And so sometimes, and sort of and kind of and sorry all are in the same family right and i just want to when i went when i was in poland that sounds like when i was in band camp when i was in poland and we were doing physical theater like non-stop for 10 hours a day and doing these crazy things with our bodies and all this they you were never allowed also in acting school to say i'm sorry if you forgot a line you were supposed to say what line stay in character, say line, you receive your line, you go on to the script. You don't drop your script and throw a temper tantrum because you forgot your line, right? And so most of our angst in life comes around the shit that we put around stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like the angst, you know? So uh, just, I just wanna, and I'm using that as an example because you were like, sometimes I'm this. No, say, it's so different when you stood in it. Yes, exactly. Can I also say, um, I'm a take no prisoners judge and a, to give no? No, I got it. I got okay. it to do with you. Okay. Right? Now, if you were, like I had a client who was a judge, so she might say I was the first, she was the first female judge elected to the bench in the state of Louisiana. Of course, she's, she could say that, right? Because then, oh, if I'm casting SVU, I need judges all the time. Why not hire a real judge that I knows knows what she's doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Can I say anything about my um, uh, health background, like physical therapy background or anything like well, that? Well, yes, sir, sure you can. You know, if there's, especially if there's a young filmmaker or someone that's like, oh, I can bring her on set as a nurse and as an actor you know she can serve more than one thing or what or healthcare practitioner right i i you know the more that you and this is for everyone the more that you understand your brand then the, and who you be and what you're selling and what you sell better than everyone else like what is your prize pig right? That you're taking to the market. Like, what is that thing that is the thing about you that like, when you see it on a breakdown, you know, that's my part. Mm -hmm. I've done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys, you guys need to know that. Like, what is the thing when, you know, I get auditions all the time and sometimes I read the breakdown. I'm like, okay, okay. You know? <laughs> and, and I mean, I see why they called me in, but 
is it the perfect part? No. And there's sometimes when I'm like, oh, that's my part. Where do I sign? Show up. Like, that's my part, right? And so you guys all know that about you. I know you do. If you don't, then you need to pay attention mm -hmm. because everyone is telling you that. You know, whatever they clapped for you in high school or whatever you've done. You know, if you're here in this challenge right now and you've never taken an acting class and you've never acted once, you shouldn't be in this challenge. I'm just going to say that right now. You should figure out if this is, look, Actors Fast Track, my company, um, we are designed to help real actors. And I don't mean any, to insult anyone about that, but like people that are committed to making money as an actor. It's not for the faint of heart. No job that you create yourself is. It's mm -hmm. not easy. Fast does not mean easy. Okay, it's, but it's hard. So, so if you're not that person, then you're probably, you know, not the right. I mean, you know, I, yeah, so anyway. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Listen, I have to go soon, but joy, come on. So I had, I had a question yes. about specifically the skills at the end. Okay. I'm struggling a little bit because I've kind of trained a little bit here and a little bit there in a little bit of everything. So I'm not good at anything and I want to incorporate that into my pitch, but I'm afraid that it's going to be goofy bordering on unprofessional if I do I don't think so I mean okay that can be funny okay and I mean every time I've said anything wait, about it's so much easier if you just can you show me can you say yeah. it out loud yeah so um I know enough uh ballet hip-hop ballroom and belly dance to make myself look like a fool I know enough martial arts to get myself hurt I can speak a little bit of French and a little bit of Spanish but mostly just to ask like where your cat's bathroom cheese has gone there's a true story behind that one and I can play hot cross buns on almost every instrument except the kazoo I cannot play the kazoo to save my life I love that Okay. That's totally stupid and silly and fun and 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 I really get what to do with you like you're just like you are a mess a lot of people say I'm a mess you are a mess you can be like the messy mama you know I'm the messy mama I wouldn't be acting then but yeah oh! <laughs> That's great what you just said. <laughs> I wouldn't be acting then. Okay, good. You, you know, the messy mama is a whole thing. It's like you're cross okay. between like Amy Schumer and um, Mayor Winningham. Those are like, those are like, that's what you remind me. Mayor Winningham and Amy Schumer. Like you have this like, yeah, this kind of like, humble pie, apple pie kind of la, la, la thing. But then you also have this like thing about you, which is like, that's what's really fun about you. Like you're a cute, cuter Amy Schumer, a cuter and younger, younger. I'm, I'm writing that down because I'm gonna use that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. That's what we're here for. So everyone, listen, this is really important. Everyone get something to take notes on. I'm someone, I know some of you guys are like, like to take notes on your phone and your computer and all that. It doesn't matter. What I want you to do is have um, something uh, to, uh, hold on a second. Uh, Caroline Partridge, mute yourself. She doesn't hear me. Okay, there she is. All right, um, everyone, this is the thing that I do in all three-day events and retreats that I've been to, is I make a list of all the good ideas because there's going to be 3 million good ideas that you're going to hear over a course of three days. And you're going to make a list. Sometimes my pages, like I would type them on my laptop and it'd be like five pages of notes. And then what I want you to do is I want you to choose five things that, and I'm going to take you through this in the event, but 
you know, so the first and most important thing is that you set an objective for what you want to get out of the three days. Um, set, um, you know, and also, you know, Sarah, just really quick, can you just talk a second about manifesting? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so I'm very into law of attraction and manifesting. And um, I recently discovered this wonderful coach named Tiana Campbell on YouTube and Etsy. And she really breaks it down where you have to say what you want, believe you have it, act like it's already here because it's here. Like there's no, how is it going to come? Which way can we get that? I need this and this to add up in order to make that work. It's just, it's here. You don't have to worry about the which way. If you're going to book the national commercial, it's already in the universe that you're booking that national commercial. You don't have to worry about which casting director is going to bring you in and which director is going to hire you because the commercial is yours. Whoever is directing it's the one that's going to direct you. You don't have to figure it out. So if, and also here's something else. Can I say this about what she said? She talked about feeling the emotion of what you will feel like when it's here, it's here, right? Like now it's arrived, right? What is the emotion? And that really was really hit for me because, yeah. oh, you feel it, it arrives, right? That I never thought it was going to get here and it's here. It's fucking here. Right. And then you live your life like you already have it. Yeah. Um, when I first hired Valerie in 2012, I was going up for this big movie and my agent at the time said, well, you're never going to get it. I didn't end up booking it, but I made it to the studio level. And I was working with Valerie and I was working with a life coach. And at the time they were like, well, think about what you would be doing if you got it, how it would change everything. So like I did visualizations on what it would be like to be on Conan and Jimmy and the tonight show being interviewed for this movie, being on uh, Kelly and I think it might have been Regis or whoever <laughs> back in 10 years ago, like whoever, well, like I constantly was in that mode. And I think that's one of the things that helped me get as far as I did for a project that my agents I'd been with for seven years said, you're not even going to be seen. I was seen. I went to the director. I was up for at the studio level for this project. So like you really have to believe that it's coming. Guys, this is just a one minute stupid pitch. Like this is a nothing. These are great connections to make, but it's just one minute of your life. And so you don't have to stress that much about it because you know who you are as an actor and you're just letting these people know too so that they can hire you. That's all it is. It's really like, it, I don't wanna say it's a throwaway because people will take that the wrong way. Um, when I first got to LA, I met Anna Ferris at a party at one of the Backstreet Boys parties. Um, and she and I were talking cause I was new to town and, uh, and she said, oh, you're an actor. And I'm like, yeah, she said some of the best advice I was ever given, do your auditions hungover. As I was a kid, my only experiences with alcohol were not great. So I didn't understand what a hangover was that wasn't like you being really sick. Um, and now that I'm older, I get it. Like you, when you're hungover, you're just like, you're going, you do it because you have to do it. But the outcome doesn't matter that much. Yeah. So don't put so much pressure on it because if you're supposed to work with any of these people, then it's already out there and it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I went to a party at Alanis Morissette's house and Ryan Reynolds was there. That's when they were dating. Early 2000s, man. Uh-huh. And then That's I was fun. like, whose house are we at? Because like, uh, the, it was all, there was like, I, I knew all like Amy Poehler and those guys, like the Hollywood writer people funny. So that's why we ended up at this party. But I was like, whose house is this? And then I go in this room and there's just a fucking piano in the middle of the room and a couple of drums. I'm like, a musician lives here. And then I went in the kitchen and I was like, oh, a lot of more set. I just saw you at Jones beach last year. You're amazing. She's like, thank you. She was so I was in a lot of more at that house and she had an art and craft room. I always dream that I'm going to have that in my dream house. It's like an art and craft room. 
I have a dressing room in my house, you guys, by the way. <laughs> Belle, can I share one more thing? Yes, you can. And then I so, have to go. On our mastermind, one of our coaches, Jesse, who, if you don't know her already, she will be there this weekend. She said to someone, um, your pitch should be something that you, you just are like, it should be easy for you to do and say. And, um, so I want to like add on to that with like practical notes for the pitch. You need to have it memorized. They do not want to see you reading. You guys are actors. It's a 60 second or less pitch. So it should be who you can wake up and say you are. Like I, Val is the ballsy boy and broad that takes you to the fun house. I am the vulnerable young woman that's been taken advantage of, but still believes in love. Like I can say that and I know it and it's true. And that's exactly what I play. So it shouldn't have to be something that you're like twisting and turning and like struggling to get. It should be kind of effortless because like Val has always been the ballsy boy at Broad that takes you to the fun house. Not even taste it. <laughs> yeah. So it like, I just don't want you guys putting so much pressure on it because it's fun and it's 60 seconds of your life. And if it doesn't go okay, you guys still get to film it and send it out to them the following week. And you can say something fun. Like I, I didn't do my best job or yeah, like, maybe you funny, do that. if you're funny like you can say that don't say sorry as Val said but you can say you know I didn't have great tech here's my, here's the best take of my pitch thank you so much for being there that's why we give you their stuff you this is just a it's just a thing that happens for 60 seconds in front of people that you could work with in the future so we're doing it more to connect you so you have that relationship than for you to necessarily get hired just because of this pitch. Does that make sense to everyone? It's just not, it's not that huge of a thing. It's a fun thing that you get the opportunity to do, but you need to own it and you have to be memorized because otherwise you're an actor. Like the, if you can't memorize your pitch, then they're like, can they memorize lines? Yeah. So make it something fun and easy that you can memorize and do in 60 seconds and then throw it away because you're going to email them the next week and add them to your list of people who are eventually going to become your fans. That is exactly right. All right. I have a client, so I'm going to have to run. Um, I will. The, the assignment today is to repost your video again. You're just going to keep working on it and getting notes wherever you can. Please know that I cannot watch everyone's. I try my best, but I've got a lot going on. Scott, Jesse, Alec, and Sarah, right? Sarah are and Brian. And Brian and Brian Coffey. They're all on their giving notes. They all work for us. They're clients and coaches, right? Um, and or they run the company like Sarah. <laughs> She's the boss of me. Um so yeah, anyway, that's, you know, uh, so they can tell you help stuff that's going to help you. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye.